Welcome back, researchers, to The Lucky Die. Previously, Lafian reads a map, Rao worries about his missing spectre, Squash describes an earthy friend, as Ultana determines collateral. Whilst on their date, Adet talks about a delicate subject with Ultana, how to handle the moments where their domains clash, and they decide not to take those clashes home. Adet then prepares a feast as the heroes prepare for their trip to World's Ren. Why did Urg become a celestial warlock? Are the heroes prepared to trek to World's Ren? And will the Triangle Bard become collateral or not? I guess we're about to find out. Welcome back to the Lucky Die. you wake up after having spent your evening however you decided to spend it you are according to Lafian's calculations about four days walk from the waterfall which would take you through a cave system and then up to the missing part of the map world's rend is there anything you want to do to prepare this is a very cold icy place that you know nothing about you have 16 rations each but we are going to be going underground. Yes, you are. In about four days' time, if you make it to the waterfall, fine. Hmm. Uh, tinder and burnable things that uh, we can make fire with. Um, so a good portion of this school has been run down. Bits of roofs have fallen and collapsed. There are a lot of rooms in here with desks and beds that you could easily break down into very... They're definitely carryable, burnable materials. Um, I don't want to worry too much about carry weights, but bag of holding. Uh, you have a bag of folding. So, yeah, that's why I allow y'all to have this bag of shit. No. Yes, you have two bags of holding between you. But you don't know how much room is in Squash's bag of holding, though. Um, yeah. You don't know how full that thing is already. So, yeah, you can very easily gather this wood. Um, you'll have enough for like four or five, let's say five days. That seems fair. Um, you can shove that in your bag of holding. I'm going to say, though, you're not going to be able to fit much more in there. I don't really remember how big that is, but I know you've got a bunch of stuff in there already. So we'll just play it by ear. <laughs> bunch of stuff. <laughs> a bunch of stuff. I don't know what you've got in there. Bunch of stuff. A lot of small um, things, yeah, actually. It's, yeah. Is there anything else that y'all want to... Uh, prep, do, ask uh, before you leave the kind of relative safety of the schoolhouse. Uh, Raw wants to poke around and see if their hunting party came back because they had sent out a hunting party and that was supposed to come yes. back and they haven't come back yet. Yeah. Um, you wake up fairly early in the morning and decide to maybe go see if the hunting party have returned. You make your way out of like the little room that y'all have decided to keep in either all together or separately. It doesn't really matter. There's plenty of rooms. Um, as you go to the front entrance where the pegs for the various clothings were, you saw that only four of them had been like not covered in dust. Um, you see that there are indeed two um, kind of like travel packs and two very big cloaks uh, that have been hung up on the pegs. Okay. Um, Ra will poke his head in and just kind of say hello and make sure everyone's okay and kind of like connect the parties for the day. Say, hey, how are y'all doing? We're still here. Uh, just good morning, <laughs> wave, and then, you know. Uh, 
you kind of do like the the tapping and the the good mornings and Orog and Elazar kind of like nod and smile and, and say good morning. Um, Elazar a little bit slower than she was yesterday, but like she still kind of like waves her trunk in hello. As you kind of like go around and like you kind of like knock on the doors and say good morning and hello, um, you knock on the door of one and it kind of just like pushes open. Um, as you tap the door and it kind of like opens a jar, you hear a couple of like murmured voices. Um, and as you kind of like peek into this room, there is a, a double bed in there that has been like two beds pushed together, like the hotel style of a double bed um, has been pushed together. And in it, you notice that there is a white and a red dragonborn. No, V. No, V. No. I'm just going to recline and... Uh, My headphones are fine. <laughs> <sighs> And I can't get them up. <laughs> he was so stunned by the information listeners that his headphones fell off. No, V. <laughs> <laughs> Let me pick up where I left off. No! <laughs> God, I'll cut no! Out, I'll cut out the part where I dropped my headphones. No, V. <laughs> Please put that back in as a blooper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, V. Uh, yeah, he's shocked, and I'm going to make... A save, B. A con save. <laughs> I am honestly going to leave it up to the rest of you if you are anywhere near Raoul or if you've joined in there, like saying goodbye to um, Elazar or to Urog. Like, I'm going to leave this entirely up to you. Um, interrupt at your own whim. Fuck. <sighs> now that. I love that you got yourself into this. <laughs> now that like, Neil's shock is over. To go talk to them. <laughs> let's deal with Raoul's shock. I was going to happily let this pass. <laughs> uh, I rolled a natural 20. <laughs> despite Ral, sorry, despite Neil's want for Ral to pass out right now. <laughs> um, you notice that one side of the room is very cold. Um, you can see the kind of spider webbing of ice all over the, the floor, all over the blanket. You also notice that on the side where the red dragonborn is sleeping, you notice that everything is kind of... There is no wood on that side of the room. Let's put it like that. Hmm. Raw kind of like wanders in, but like with the attention to ask what the fuck, I guess. Um, <laughs> I'll say that he has not been quiet, though, as soon as the door creaked open and he noticed. It was just yeah. like... You could hear him uh, <laughs> making discomfortable noises. This is acid stirred up, yeah, yeah. anyways. The uh, red dragonborn uh, kind of like is the one that made the most noise when you knocked. You had the like rumbling noise of someone responding, and they kind of flick their eyes open, look over at you, and their eyes go wide, and they kind of shake their partner and they pull them backwards, and they both kind of look at you wide eyed, pushed up against the headboard of the bed as best as they can. Uh, we're all looking at each other with wide eyes. <laughs> yes. We're all very slowly, like, not being able to, like, form words, kind of just raises a hand to wave. <laughs> but <laughs> the face of shock does not go away. <laughs> the red dragonborn, um, he looks over at their partner and just, like, looks back and very slowly, the red dragonborn, they wave back at you. Sorry. Uh, Rob will go and try to close the door. And, uh... No, no, it's it's okay. You're not here to, to take him back, are you? And you can see that the red dragonborn, um, they've put their arm across, like, the body of the white dragonborn, and they seem to be leaning forward a little bit more, a little bit more protective. Um, the white dragonborn, he looks kind of terrified. Uh, Raul just kind of slowly, like, I guess, makes his chin more visible and pulls down some cloth because it's gone down into his neck now quite a ways. So he just, like, yeah. lets that do <laughs> answer the question for them. <laughs> lets that do the talking. Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry, mate. You too, huh? And you see the both of them just kind of, like, they're not exactly relaxed, but they are no longer just, like, really tense. Both of you? The white dragonborn nods his head, and he says, Yeah. You're in the wrong place for this. The red dragonborn kind of like shrugs, uh, shrugs their shoulders, and then like, 
We are making enough heat for both of us. I imagine. I know. Um, if you're from Kino, they said, though, I wasn't expecting. The white dragonborn looks at you and says, We got blown off course. We were trying to make it to... We heard of a place called Little May, and we were going to go there, but we got blown to here. And then the red dragonborn, they say, And then Elizar saved us, so we decided to stick around. How long have you been here? Uh, they look at each other and they're, they're kind of like, they're doing that thing where they're trying to think <laughs> back exactly how long um, the pair of them have been here. About three years. Hmm. And they're still talking about Little May, huh? Yeah. And yeah. That was gone Why? a few years. That was gone a few years prior. You wouldn't have found it. Well, oh. you would have found the ruins. I found the ruins. Well, how long for you? How long ago? I mean. Mm, seven, almost eight years. You? I mean, I know how we're still breathing, but what about you? Same way. Same way. I had someone helping me. Well... Look, um, this is a bit awkward. We're kind of not dressed yet. Can you give us five minutes? I did try to close the door a second ago. Um. Well, the kind of shock of... Yeah. Five minutes? So that they can get dressed? I don't mind being naked so much. No, you can't be naked, love. <laughs> no. I uh, will, uh... <laughs> Where, hi, I'm Raul. What are in the other room here? Um, I was just saying hi and make. We'll catch we up in a minute. The, the hunting party. I just wanted to make sure everything, everyone made it back. Um, nice to meet you. I'm in Raul. <laughs> Leaves. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I'll go to the patron name list and get their names. <laughs> the- right, so, um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say that Rel, uh, because the, the rest of you three didn't mention anything, um, Rel can definitely walk back into the room where the three of you are. Um, Urog is tending to Elazar at this time of the morning, um, setting new fires, making food, etc. Um, so, yeah, you can see, I'm going to say very visibly shocked, Rel. Yeah, he's <laughs> that like... That probably wouldn't be a step too far. <laughs> not really blinking or turning his head, and he's just like looking and staring and thinking. He just sits down and stares straight ahead of him, just with a frozen expression. <laughs> Raul, you good? Uh, huh? Waves a hand in front of your face. Are you all right? You're a little, um... Uh, yeah, I'm fine. There are dragonborn here. Really? Uh, yes, two of them. Did they... Give you the whole, oh, you're supposed to be dead bit. No, they're supposed to be dead, too. Oh. What are they doing here? They were looking for... They were looking for the place that I was looking for when I found the Scoria. The place does not exist anymore. They were looking oh. for Little May. Oh, right. Rumors are of the uh, place are known in Daemarius, especially to the sick trying to get away, thinking about getting away. Oh, so they're sick? Yes. One of them should not be here. But to be fair... Their partner should not be anywhere else but here. <laughs> um, oh. Fire and ice. I don't know what they're doing here, but it can't be comfortable for the icy one. I mean, if they're comfortable living here. They can't, they can't leave, though. 
Well, they won't leave. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to take their memories. Spectre seems like that was hard even for him to do, and I'm just learning small things. It's not like I have a practice brain to work on, you know. Uh, at this point, the red dragonborn and the white dragonborn walk into the room. Uh, the white dragonborn is wearing like really heavy furs. Um, they're like wearing like they're wearing a lot of stuff. Um, the dra- red dragonborn they're wearing a lot less, <laughs> uh, like like you know, like modesty pants. Like that's about <laughs> it, really. Um, <laughs> the pair of them walk into the room. Yeah, yeah, just really nice ones. Flannel kinda. PJs. <laughs> Hiya. Hiya. Hello. Hey. Are they uh, speaking common? Uh, they're speaking um, whenever Ral speaks. Dragonborn. Um, yeah, Draconic. They can't, Draconic, thank you. They can't speak Draconic. Min. Um. Oh, what about common? Well, Lafian says hi in Draconic and that's it. Well, actually, the- <laughs> do you speak the same common as the Elizar and Urog? Like they switch to Kino common. <laughs> There's just a glazed over shake, shake of Squash's head when they do that. <laughs> no, they can't speak that either. <laughs> Ross has in Kino common. <laughs> <laughs> right, Ross can speak everything. <laughs> um, uh, the White Dragonborn. Um, basically says I'll go and ask Urag for come on my love let's go and um, he reaches out for the red dragonborn and the pair of them go off obviously probably to go find Urag and uh, Elazar well that's rather interesting I don't know how the icy one is alive here it's not safe here for that he will die here is it a he? Uh, yeah the white dragonborn is a he, and the red dragonborn is a they. Okay. Well, they're surely still alive, thanks to the to the the red one. Yeah, they're helping each other. That has a limited lifespan too. If one goes, they both go. Well, yeah, and especially if the if the red one goes first, that would be. Disastrous. All the more reason why what we're doing is very important. Hmm. I just don't know how exactly we're going to make it to where they can leave. We can't put them back on the boat, can we can. When Ronra we... promised to let the the sick ones go, right? They won't leave. Well, if the hunters leave <laughs> Oh yeah, good point. Uh, like they, they all—it's all or nothing. We save all these people, or none of the people, you know. Yeah, I've been thinking about the whole um, taking memories thing. Um, for what, what? What's that lady's name? Eliza. Eliza. Um. Um. Are you sure that the? If, from what you guys have told me about the specters and about bringing people back, it doesn't sound like the specters would ever willingly take their memories. The specters seem to behave in kind of a cruel way, kind of in a cruel, ironic way, I guess is the phrasing. I don't think in the same way that they won't take away your excessive uh, asset making because it's not a boon, it's a curse. If it made you more powerful, they'd happily take it. But because it makes you weaker and suffer, they're not going to take it from you. I'm not saying that that is going to be... That won't pay the cost, probably. But I think that maybe they would help and take the memories anyways for the reason of they are nice. Mm, They're nice to you, Roll. They were nice to me before I was a specter. Why would they not be nice to her? Your specter treated you differently. Most people don't get that same kind of treatment. In case you didn't notice, even mine is uh, not a big fan of me. And I didn't do anything. I just happened to have a spirit (laughs) in my brain that was uh, long overdue. So you don't think we could convince her specter to take a little extra memory? 
a bad I don't think thing. it's just the memories that's the problem, though. From you the hear sounds a little of it. tap from the doorway, and you see the two dragonborn and Urok have returned. We'll discuss it later. Yeah, uh, if it's what I think you were talking about, uh, problem solved. She, uh, she don't want it, but she does want to leave. What? I don't know. She was. I spoke to her about it, and last night she was kind of like, no. And then this morning she just woke up and was like, yeah. I think she wants to leave, but she doesn't want to lose the memories of anything. So. Are you sure she wants to leave and she was not confused when she said yes? I'll have to ask her again tomorrow and the day after, and if it's pretty consistent, then that's what she wants. But. That's going to take a bit of time, but you've got to travel somewhere, right? Yeah. Further north. What was it well, called? The World's when you come back. Rent? Right. Yeah, yeah, that, 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 that place. Yeah, so when you come back, I guess pick us up. Uh, I'll make sure we get stuff ready, and if she has changed her mind, she's still confused, then uh, thank you, but no thank you. Oh, this is good. Um. We don't know how we're going to be leaving exactly. We kind of assumed about, I think, something crazy would have to well, happen for us to teleport out of a place that we can't teleport into, I think. But crazy things happen a lot with us. <laughs> but you guys could wait on the boat. There's no reason that you could not go to the boat already. Uh, I'll give her time to see if she's not, if she's really set on this or not. Like Okay. Well, if you do decide there's a place in Falsam, it's in the center by the desert. It's a good place for most of you. And he kind of glances at the uh, red one. <laughs> <laughs> you see uh, the the red dragonborn and the white dragonborn. They kind of look at each other. And for a moment, you see that, that glimmer of like hope in both of their eyes. Um, but it just kind of disappears again the moment you look back at them. Um and Urug says, if you could write a really good description down, I, I don't I don't know it yet, but I could learn teleport and if at least we can get into the ocean, we might be able to go somewhere. So why don't you write it down and if the worst comes to the worst, oh, figure something out. Lafian changes his focus to cartography tools and starts drawing up a map. Well, why don't you just show him? <laughs> why don't you just show him a memory of the place that he needs to teleport? I can't show memories anymore. The only way I was able to show memories to you guys was the mind link we you had. Can't, I thought you mm -hmm. couldn't do it across a group, but you could still one on one. I could only look at their memories. Yeah. They couldn't look it's at mine. It's only him peering, not back the other way. Mm. It's a one-way street. You could attempt it, though. I mean, we've broken bigger rules, so <laughs> you can try. If <laughs> if you're willing to try working with it, V, sure. Always. Um, I did want to also <laughs> do a past vision the night before. We didn't get to, I didn't get to do it in the last recording, but that's something I wanted uh -huh. to do as well. I know I had mentioned it when yeah. we were playing last time. Yeah, but we can... Yeah, we can um, we can totally set it up in this episode as something you do just before you leave. Um, I just won't charge you the side points for it or whatever. Okay. I just conveniently forget. I'm fine with that. So let me hit the long rest button just because I had spent side points last time. <laughs> you know, fighting yeah, the rat monsters. King. Um, <laughs> Y'all are so powerful. <laughs> so <laughs> You'll fuck that rat king up so hard. <laughs> we really did. Uh, yeah. So Laffian, like starts trying to draw up a map and then is like, you know, actually, Urog, if you'd like to, it might be easy if I, if you'd like, I I can try seeing if I can impart some of my memories to you. I, I've never done it before. Normally I see other people's past, but if you're willing to try, uh, I will. Hi, I sure. have normal abilities. I have uh, weird abilities outside of uh, what normal people have. I don't deal with magic. I deal with the brain. I uh, right, sure. Um, and they just walk over and put a hand out, like palm out to. He's like, magic, not magic away. Go for it. All right, sure. I'm not terrified or anything. The, Go for it. There's no, I, I, there's no backfiring or anything. Worst case scenario, it just doesn't work. In which case, I'll just finish drawing up the map. <laughs> 
This is as much a learning experience for me as it is for me. Well, you're not making me feel any less nervous, Pa. I've seen seen him blow up someone's head before. (laughs) That was a deer and that was food. I'm not saying that out loud. Oh, boy. (laughs) JK. Yeah, they put their hand out, palm up, and they just, they look nervous. They're not even bothering to hide this. They have no idea what's going on, but they're going with it. All right. So uh, Lafian puts one hand underneath theirs and then puts another on top. And then closes his eyes and just says, all right, close your eyes and try to clear your mind. She does. And he is going to uh, try to impart the memories of kind of a, an overall view of Falsum, where it is in relation to the ocean. Um, Mm -hmm. Give a general idea of where it's located within the desert and everything. Um, any okay, important uh, landmarks? If you, uh, if you click the button, and then we'll we'll see if what we can do with that. Uh, what button would you like me clicking? Because this is a little Which... outside the norm. Oh, the button. Oh, this is not also outside the norm. This is the 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 wonderful thing I gave you, isn't it? Uh, technically, yeah, in which case that would you. be an intelligence check. All right. Um, in that case, yeah, I'll have you make an intelligence check. Seventeen. Sure. Fuck it. You know Falsum well enough. You have experimented with dreamwalking with Zoltana. You have done the mind link. It's not exactly in your wheelhouse. It's not as smooth as you would necessarily want it to be. And you see them flinching a little bit in pain at this bizarre sudden influx of memories and ideas. And they pull their hand away pretty quickly. And you see her looking down at her hand, looking back up at you. And she says, well, that was new. Okay. That was new for both of us. But I'm glad to see it at least works. Okay. All right, then I guess I uh, better borrow the old lady's book and have a look and see if I can <laughs> teleport. <laughs> Oh, fuck my life. And you still see them just like walk away from the room, like head down. Um, and just as they hit the threshold, they spin around and he's a, and she says, but of course that's only if, if we have to do the worst and I teleport out and jump into the sea or something. If, But the boat will be there, right? There, there's a boat. Right. In case she definitely wants to go and yes. for when I want to leave when she's gone. But they might leave us if we take too long. So you guys should go ahead and go. Oh, okay. How do how do we signal him? Well, we were going to do a sending to them to let them know. Um, but uh, we came from roughly that direction. Squaz is going to point to where we landed. And you could <laughs> yeah. see the boat uh, from the dock. So if you bring lights with you, they probably come out and try to meet you. All right. Uh, I mean, I guess I could like make a bonfire or something. That, that might work. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. Uh, sending. How how are any of you going to do sending? Uh, I've been playing around with magic, and I should be able to cast it sufficiently. Uh, you see her. She had to teach you alert last night. Um, a basic level one spell. So she kind of gives you a look of absolute confusion. Uh, but but you. She purses her lips and she does like like closing a hand, finger pointed thing, and she pulls her finger back in again to her chest and like, do you know? What? I'm not even going to ask. Not my problem. Uh, she kind of like leaves the room. In the worst case, I'll write a note. They will. They will recognize my name, if nothing uh, else, and they will know that you have at least met us. A fair warning. And Laughing actually looks at the red and white. Dragonborn. Yes, we should talk. <laughs> There's, uh, the boat has other Dragonborn and Kobolds on there. We came from Demarius. They're totally cool, though. They're friendly. You see, you see the pair of them just like, like grip their, each other's hands really hard and they're just like, they're just shaking their heads instantly. Just like. He was on the boat. Points at Raul. He was on the boat. They're cool. Well, Ranma they, they is sending all of the sick from the Marius to Falsam. 
where we are going to take care of them until we can help them. All of the other sick will be there too. It's just a I, matter of... We'd much rather... Dealing with some of the arrogant ones for a while. We don't... And the white dragonborn... Um, I make sure I get there. Yes, what are your names? Right. <laughs> uh, the white dragonborn, he says... My name is Rethan and this is Kylas. We'd much rather go to Falsum. I really don't want to meet any other dragonborn. Not right now. Look, we know you had a good experience with them, but we don't even know why you're Mm. here, and why they even agreed to do this with you. I did not have a good experience with them. They were nice. They didn't give us any problems. I still think the carpenter really liked you. They were patient with me because of Wurenwa and that is all. That's what I think. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What has Rue Wenwell got to do with this? The gods dying? The purpose they don't of the... not know who we are. I, I think you're skipping no. a couple of steps there, Raul. I th- no, I th- I, they probably don't know the purpose of the dragonborn. No. No? No, see. Former purpose. <laughs> Former, yes. How about... Sit... Sit down. We will explain, have a conversation, look at options. It's oh, going to take a few hours. <laughs> um, how about we skip that just for a minute? What are you doing here? Like, why did you come here? We are here to take a test that will help us prove ourselves powerful enough to stop the world from ending because we have you see been helping both of them and... just kind of like put a hand against the side of their heads yeah. like they've just got a very yeah. intense headache um let's let's phrase it maybe a different way we have struck a deal with winranra and the end goal of that deal is the freedom of all those afflicted by dragon's maw it's not finalized. Then, but they have. You see the pair of them look at each other, and the red dragonborn is literally opening their mouths. You can see them about to mouth the word no <laughs> when the white dragonborn puts a, a hand on their hand and says, Just tell us what we can do to help. All you have to do is survive. If you make it through the end of this, you won't have to worry about. The cold or the hot anymore. But you, you will have to worry about being small. left here. In the place where, after all of this, maybe no one will be able to get you again. Maybe the opportunity to get away from here won't come up again. Well, not if I say, but that's not the story. What can we do to help you right now? If you're here to help because of a deal... <laughs> again, you see um, you see the white dragonborn, they put a hand against the side of his head, and he says, Whatever this test is, we can help. Math, probably. <laughs> I'm sorry, di- we didn't... Can I get an insight check on the white dragonborn? Sure. The headache and the test are making Laffian a little, a little suspicious. The test is because I mentioned, or the headache is because I mentioned the test. <laughs> right. I'm just like, their reaction to this seems a little peculiar. Okay. Sure. Rolling inside. Not 20, 27. What are you trying to read? If they seem to know more than they're leading on, or if there's something they know that we don't, like if they're hiding something about this? They don't appear to be hiding anything. They don't appear to be doing anything other than earnestly trying to get out of being in a cold place. Okay. Well, we're going to be traveling uh, towards a cave. Uh, ba- balance. Sorry, Balance. <laughs> it's a hard habit to break. Lafian has a map of it, and... Uh, at least where it should be. You guys travel around a lot here. You've been hunting and stuff like that. If 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 you could 
Maybe tell us a little bit about this country, about this nature here. That would help us a lot. We got attacked by trees outside. This place isn't this normal. Place. Maybe oh, a yeah. safe route. This place. That would be nice. If you've got a map, we can figure out where you want to go. Muffin pulls it out. Great. They kind of point at the map and they point to areas that you have plotted through. Right. They're like, uh, not this way. It's just ice over a crevasse. Go around that. A half extra day and you won't fall in. I don't know how to avoid it, but right here, right by the waterfall area, you can't see into it very well. And when the storm picks up, which it will in a day or so, you won't see this bit at all. And you're definitely not going to see the safe cave behind the waterfall. We've hidden there ourselves a few times. It's tough to get to. Dangerous, even. And also by the entrance Uh, round. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. It's all right. I got it, love. Just around the entrance to the water cave, there's this kind of webs. Tiny creatures. I don't really know how to explain them. We only just manage to avoid them sometimes, and I... Well, a few times I've tangled with them... They're kind of tiny webs of ice, but they burn, and they trap you, and it's very difficult to get out of, and it hurts. I don't know what they are, we just avoid them when we spot them. We never go up there in a storm. Are you sure you have to do this now? Yeah. Very definitely. Here, let me draw something. Um, and the white dragonboard Rethin... Um, he runs off and he grabs like a parchment and um, grabs a parchment and some charcoal and they draw this very fine web looking thing um, like a very complicated snowflake Um, and it's just very big and they just draw it on here and they just say this is much bigger but this is how I remember it it's much smaller than this and it's really very fine thin and delicate it's difficult to see especially in a storm lovely Crevices of ice, burning web things. You All just know that work. it's you just know that it's dangerous. You don't know what it is. Um, Rethin shakes his head and says, "They've attacked me a few times, but luckily Kylas was there." These That's are yeah. sentient. Appears to be. They don't randomly attack things that are way bigger than them. They go for the things they can engulf. Unfortunately, we're just about their size. You do, though. And um, they look down at uh, Squash and looks across to Zoltana. It's going to be hard, we know. Lovely. Anything else we need to worry about? Have you ever gone so far north as to World's Rend? No, nah, that's like a week and a half's journey, and I do not want to go into those caves. There's not any, like, horses or anything, is there? Not in snow. Um, what about something that could, well, you could tie a cart to and make it run anyways? Anything like that? They just kind of look at each other and uh, look, it's very obvious to see Kylas is like uh, how strong their arm muscles are. Um, and they look back at each other, look back at you and they're like. We just kind of carry things ourselves or Ura grabs anything else. Hmm. Not so much Eliza anymore. Caves. Well, we'll leave the four of you to it. We've got some butchering to get on with. Stay safe out there, all right? If Dragonborn give you a hard time, we run what told all of the sick to, to be gathered and, and go. They have to. They can't give you a hard time. We're going to Folsom? We're going to that place. Well, Falsam. we're going to go where Ergog and Elizar are going, but we're hopefully going to Folsom. It's safe. Safe there. Safe enough. Safer than here. And there are cold places nearby. So we are working that out to Ama is there, um, handling a lot of that. Um, Thorin is around, um, but he's not. I don't like him. He's kind of less involved. Yeah, me neither. That's why. Um, And he's getting better. You see, uh, Kylis just kind of like raise an eyebrow at Amos' name. It's something they recognize, but they're clearly not able to place it very, very well. Um, Rethin, no idea whatsoever. Look for a golden dragonborn who is not sick. All right. What's the name again? Describes, describes Ama a bit. 
What's the name? We gave you our names, but we never got yours. Oh, I said it as you were crying about being naked and I was in the room. Um, That's probably why we don't remember. <laughs> Squash. Just like, I'm the sorry, first, like... Rol, can you... You know what? I don't want to know. <laughs> the pair of them just get really flushed. And like... <laughs> <laughs> Rol, what you do on your time is your business. What? Uh... <laughs> Ross, uh, uh, fuck you guys. Ross says that in Dragonborn. You can't be in on this good joke. <laughs> fuck you guys. <laughs> I use my secret language so you guys can understand me. <laughs> uh, the worst. <laughs> Goodness. Um, All right. They take your name yes. and they depart. <laughs> what color does a white Dragonborn blush as? Gray? Uh, Pink? I don't know. Well, it, it's it's just blood rushing to their cheeks, so it would still be like reddish, I but, assume. But yeah. also, a blush is like an increase of your, like, you know, blood pressure or wouldn't that? Heart rate and stuff. Heart, yeah, that would yeah. that would also make them colder. <laughs> oh. Even just a little bit, <laughs> if any, but, you know. <laughs> but that would make the blush go away? Yeah. <laughs> They blush All right, blue. let's not get into the biology of dragonborns, okay? This is a fantasy game. I only do so much with biology. Uh, I'm blue. not in school. They leave. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't the cold lower your blood pressure? Oh, God. Come back and please. bless again for us. <laughs> for science. <laughs> help me. Let me pick apart your brain. <laughs> How's that going to help you figure the blushing out? Okay, that's enough. Neurons. So, uh, the pair of them have lost, uh, have left. Are you ready to start your journey? Anything else you want to do while you're here? Rawl is, is still just kind of in shock and thinking a lot about <laughs> a bunch of stuff. Okay. I want to see what the right, place was like. Vision. All right. Hit us up. Never mind. It's a net one. <sighs> Impressive. No, 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 no. This is just... Roll well, twenty. You get those out of your roll system. Roll twenty. Take you it away. You had a nat twenty. Take it away. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. yeah. Laffian night prior was like, I want to see things, and then uh, was like, you know what? I'm kind of really tired. <laughs> That's fair. Oh wait, I had enough side points yesterday. I could do it again. Sure. Because I only, I, I was like at like forty something, and I still had all my like other stuff. Another one, please. Mm -hmm. Another one. Ah. Oh, 22. Oh, all right. What do you want to see? The past of the, uh, the town. Specifically so, in the school. There's like 5,000 years of past. <laughs> okay, the last time... I need something this, a little bit more specific. When there was civilization. Oh, holy shit. Yes, yes. Okay. Ooh, um, the last day I of peace. To. Yeah, like what, what? why this was abandoned. Like when oh. this was abandoned. What happened that made everybody leave? What you see in the school, because this is where your vision is limited to, mm -hmm. is you see, what you see are creatures with kind of very rounded heads, um, very, very spherical. You can see that they do have a nose, but it's kind of like dark and you can see the nostrils. You can see that they have little whiskers coming out the side of their faces. Their eyes are very big and round and dark in colour. You can see that they are covered in fur. It's very thin, um, not very long. Um, looks like it's clearly very waterproof. They are a multitude of colours, um, the kind of the greys and the light browns, uh, whites. They can be speckled or striped. You can see that they have two arms, but their hands are kind of more like paws. You can see that they have... Mm, their legs are a lot shorter. Their bodies are very long. Um, they kind of more have just feet. Um, and these, again, tend to be like really big paws. You can see that they are gathering all of their belongings. You understand any word that's spoken or is it you can only read anything? Uh, the focus would make it where I can only read. Okay. They are communicating in their language is kind of a lot of like grunts and calls um, it's a lot less 
it doesn't sound much like words it's more like intonations and feelings and you get a sense of a lot of smells like their communication is not the same as yours they seem to be gathering all their things as you look up you can see the sky is just a light with stars so many more stars than today you can see the aurora just going off above them you can also see a massive wingspan of a dragon as it flies overhead you can see them panicked gathering all of their things and they look at the school they shake their heads and they leave you do note as they leave that the cliff is much closer than when you found it there you go so these are like cat these are like tabaxi but not tabaxi is the description i got they're kind of a bit more like seals Oh, Selkie. Sure. I, I don't know how a Selkie is, but sure. I couldn't. I was thinking about the where the wild things are monsters. <laughs> the whole <laughs> time. What you got out of that? <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Okay. The whole time you were doing that, my brain kept filling in. What can can uh, Laffy and see why kids love the taste of cinnamon toast crunch? Fuck you, oh that's my, my God. line. <laughs> Casey, I, Fuck you, that's Casey, my line. Casey, I almost made that joke. I shit you not. I can't remember what it was about yet. <laughs> I hate you guys. You. That's literally my line. <laughs> Best. Earlier in this episode, Best we were talking about an eye, I was going to say. No, I didn't. I restrained, okay. and you need to show the same <laughs> restraint. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck I with, do with my bad jokes. <laughs> there is no filter, no filter. Uh, <clears throat> uh, that's the best answer, Casey. Um, um, v. So, question. Uh, yes. Those dr- uh, dragon wings that I see in the vision. Uh, do they look a little, one might say, uh, tattered and perhaps undead-ish? What did you get on your roll? Twenty-two. You would suspect, but you couldn't see for sure. Do I have an idea of roughly how long ago this was? Um, hmm. I'm going to say, yeah, no, fuck it, yeah. Like, you know that this is a really, 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 really long time ago. One might say 5,000. Give or take a year or two, yeah. Okay, (laughs) so uh, when we're at the table then, uh, before (laughs) departing. (laughs) You good? Yeah, so yeah, it's it's about 5,000 years. You would suspect that this probably is ice current. This probably is what? Uh, ice current. Uh, Draco Lich, does that help? Ice cream? Ice cream, <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is another one of those things where I actually did say it out loud and didn't hear it. Um, yeah, that it's would be the Draco Lich from 5,000 years prior. Demarius. Uh, Demarius's mother, yes. Demarius, oh yeah, Demarius's Demarius. mother. Okay. All right. So then at the table, then, uh, after all that other stuff has transpired, um, by the way, I did a bit of a peek into the past of this place. Uh, the people that lived here were, they looked kind of like, I don't even know how to describe it. They kind of had like very short fur, hair, sort of. They, they, they basically were like humanoid seals. Is the best way I can make a comparison. Um, apparently, Demarius's mother made a uh, visit here a very long time ago, and uh, I guess that was enough to make them run off. Of note, though, the cliff that we arrived on was a lot closer to here back then. So this ice has been building. It's snowing a lot. <laughs> I don't think it's just the snow, but that's a lot of expanding ice. But, well, I, I don't know if it's anything to worry about or not, but one world ending problem at a time. Hey, everyone. It's V here. Thank you for listening to the episode. Um, my favourite part of this might have been Neil knocking his own headphones off. Um, I laughed quite hard at that. Um, 
I want to say a thank you to our patrons, John and Asgardu. Thank you so much. We really appreciate your support. I also need to say thank you to Monstrous Beast for the name Rethin and Rogue2015 for the name Kylus. Appreciate those. They're not named Pete and Pete, which is great. And we also want a big shout out and thank you to Mickey Rogers, who did the voice of Rethin, and Michelle Martin, who did the voice of Kylus. Hopefully we'll hear an ad for some of the stuff that they're in pretty soon. Um, but that's when baby gets them to me. So we'll be hearing that. And they're really nice folks. And I really appreciate the work they did. They sound beautiful. Um, their accent, so much better than mine. So thank you guys so much for that. You're about to hear an ad from Shadows at the Door. Yes, David and Mark, they are doing a mini series about Dorian Gray. And it sounds rad as fuck. So go listen to that. Even if you don't listen to anything else, there's go listen to their mini series. They are wonderful human beings. And the series sounds great. And it also has Kareem in it who is the voice of our Uwama. so yes yes all the yes this series is going to be great we would do the giveaway announcement the winners for that today but we haven't had a chance to get together yet as I said before life has been kicking us in the ass but as soon as we get together again and we pull those names then we will let you know who has won the mirror art all right have a good week folks bye coming soon from shadows at the door It is your best work, Basil. The best thing you have ever done. Basil, I must see Dorian Gray. Harry, Dorian Gray is my dearest friend. He has a simple and beautiful nature. Don't spoil him. I'm jealous of the portrait you have painted of me. Why should it keep what I must lose? Every moment that passes takes something from me and gives something to it. Oh, if it will only the other way. Dorian. If the picture could change and I could always be what I am now. (laughs) The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde.